So today we will see different tests for uh, determining the shear strength parameters. OK, so we have to determine shear strength parameters of soil. What are the shear strength parameters of soil? They're nothing but C and phi of the soil, right? So how can you find out the C and phi of the soil from the Mohr circles, correct? You plot a Mohr circle for a stress system of sigma and tau for different values of normal stress and different values of corresponding shear stresses. You will plot your Mohr circle. Then you can plot your failure envelope. Once you plot your failure envelope, the slope of that failure envelope will give you your phi and the tau intercept or the y axis intercept of the failure envelope uh, will give you your C value, correct? So that is your cohesion parameter and the slope will give you your angle of internal friction parameter. So to obtain your shear strength parameters of soil, you basically have to plot the, you have to find out the limiting values of sigma and tau in all soils, isn't it? Essentially. So to find that, you have some shear tests in the lab. Okay, you have shear tests in the lab and you have shear tests in the field as well. Okay, so basically you have to obtain your failure envelope to find out the C and phi parameters. So these tests are conducted on undisturbed soil samples obtained from the field with field drainage conditions simulated. So as we discussed yesterday, there is uh, a you know, condition of effective stress here. We have to think about the effective stress here. So you have to find out uh, the shear strength parameters as closely as possible, replicating it with the field conditions, right? You may have, you know, waterlogged soil. You may have uh, alternative drying and wetting seasons in the soil. So you have to try to replicate the field conditions as closely as possible when you conduct the tests in the lab, right? So for that, you have to obtain an undisturbed soil sample also from the field. So you have to collect a soil sample very carefully from the field without disturbing its uh, composition or without disturbing its, uh, you know, uh, uh, density or compaction or water content, you have to collect the soil sample from the field as closely as possible uh, in the field conditions. You have to bring it to the lab and then you have to test it in its maximum possible uh, replication to the actual field conditions. So how do we collect these samples and all we will see in the next chapter. Okay, so you have to collect a undisturbed sample. So now you know what is an undisturbed sample. As the name suggests, you don't disturb the soil sample much and you retain all its in situ properties. All right, so you bring an undisturbed sample uh, to the uh, lab, then you try to uh, simulate the field drainage conditions. All right, then you test, you conduct the shear strength tests in the lab. All right, or you can also conduct some field tests. In the field itself, you can conduct those tests. So it is very important to simulate the field drainage conditions as shear strength or uh, these results vary with the drainage conditions because why because of course due to the effective stress principle isn't it if there is uh, a lot of water content in the pores so when you try to uh, apply the normal stress what will happen some of those load will be taken by the water in the pores pore pressure and some of the load only will be transferred to the soil particles so effective stress principle comes into act isn't it so once you uh, once drainage is permitted what happens slowly this water will dissipate we saw this in the spring analogy do you remember so slowly this water will dissipate and your pore pressure while the mu will slowly decrease with time and your effective stress sigma dash will keep on increasing with time and finally when time t is equal to some infinity or time is equal to t final, what will happen? Your total stress will become equal to your normal stress, right? But if not, if drainage is not permitted, then your total stress comes into play. The normal stress that you apply will be your total stress because some of the load, if drainage is not permitted, some of the load will be taken by the pore pressure and the rest of the load only will be taken by the soil particles. Correct. So you have to try to simulate the field drainage conditions as closely as possible. Right. So a cohesionless soil may be tested either in dry condition or in its saturated condition and cohesive soil will be tested in its saturated condition in which there will be two stages. Okay. 
so cohesionless soil can be tested in dry condition or in a saturated condition because in cohesionless soil uh, you know sandy soils the drainage happens very fast because the permeability is very high in cohesionless soil by the time you have completed your test probably your uh, pore pressure would have already dissipated completely but in the case of cohesive soil that is clay soil where the permeability is very very less they are tested in two conditions all right the tested in two stages okay first stage is the consolidation stage so in which you apply your confining pressure or the normal stress and you allow the sample to consolidate first why because we don't want to uh, have the effect of pore pressure here right so you will consolidate your sample first right then only you will get your true cohesion and true angle of internal friction isn't it so you will consolidate your sample first so for that you keep on increasing your confining pressure and you allow the sample to consolidate you will remove the water from the sample then the next stage it is shearing stage so in which in the second stage you apply a deviatoric stress to shear the sample and for that deviatoric stress you will find out your uh, failure envelope right so there are two stages for cohesive soil so first one is consolidation stage where you will allow drainage and you will dissipate the pore pressure and after the pore pressure have dissipated you will try to shear the soil sample and for that condition you will find out your sigma and tau and you will plot your uh, more circle or the failure envelope so if it is a cohesive soil or a clay soil as the permeability is very less it need not represent the uh, actual long term site condition clearly right because the permeability of clay soil is very less and it will take a long time for the pore pressure to dissipate and the whole load to be transferred onto the uh, soil particles effective stress principle sigma is equal to sigma dash plus mu right so mu will dissipate very slowly and then sigma dash increases very slowly and at a very after a very long period of time only your sigma will be equal to your sigma dash right so you have to uh, you know remove the pore pressure first right so that the strength parameters that you obtain are clearly replicating the actual strength parameters of the soil alone the true cohesion and true sigma uh, true uh, c and true uh, phi or sigma dash and phi dash you will get only when there is no pore pressure isn't it we saw the effect of uh, effective stress in more coulomb theory yesterday right no correlate right so first you have to consolidate your sample and remove the water content from that so that the whole load that you apply is actually taken by the soil particles else so what will happen some of the load will be taken by water also no so in that case you will not get the limiting values of sigma and tau for uh, soil particles because some of the load some of the sigma will be taken by water so you will not get the maximum tau for the soil so what you have to do is you have to consolidate the sample first remove any pore pressure and find out the true cohesion and the true angle of internal friction of the sample so first you will consolidate your sample that is the first stage and the second stage you will try to shear the sample you will apply you will increase your uh, normal stress and you will uh, shear your sample and you will fail it all right so how you will do all these tests you basically for a particular normal stress how much is the shear stress the soil can take that is what you basically plot correct so for different values of sigma and tau you will mark all those points in the sigma tau space and you join that once you join that what you will get you will get a combination of sigma and tau values and when you join that you will get a line which that line will represent your basically your failure envelope isn't it and of course the tau intercept of the failure envelope is your c value and the slope of that tau uh, slope of this a failure envelope is your phi right that's how you basically obtain all these uh, all the results from all these tests clear so depending upon whether drainage is permitted during these tests or not so the tests are classified into three okay we i told you we try to replicate the uh, field conditions as closely as possible so you have three tests basically you have unconsolidated undrained test all right it is there in the name unconsolidated undrained test so what you are doing is you are not consolidating your sample unconsolidated you are not consolidating your sample undrained you are not draining the water away from your soil clear so unconsolidated undrained test so in this test drainage is not permitted at any stage of the test basically 
test on cohesive soil have two stages first one is consolidation stage second one is shearing stage right so in this test it is an unconsolidated undrained test that means there is no drainage permitted at any stage of the tests so that means there is no consolidation stage in this test okay you directly go ahead and shear the soil sample so no time is allowed for dissipating the pore pressure and consolidation so there is no significant volume change also observed we saw the uh, volume change in consolidation isn't it the volume keeps on decreasing isn't it when you are trying to consolidate your sample because the particles gets rearranged and the uh, water from the pores are driven out and soil is rearranged and comes to a more compact uh, form so that a volume slightly decreases so in this case it is an unconsolidated untrained test so there is no significant volume change and also only short time is required for the whole test because you are not consolidating your sample consolidation is a very long process it's a time dependent process isn't it it's a long process in cohesive soils why because permeability of cohesive soils is very less so it's a very long process consolidating the sample but in this case we are not consolidating the sample it's an unconsolidated untrained test so only short time is required so this test is conducted only on soils of low permeability of course cohesive soils so it is called a cube test all right the test is very fast because you are not waiting for the sample to consolidate and all you will just just collect a undisturbed soil sample from the field you will right away you will shear it okay so it is denoted as uu test which stands for unconsolidated undrained test or q test or q undrained test okay so uu q or qu test so this is uh, one type of test unconsolidated undrained test then the next one is consolidated undrained test as you can see here drainage is permitted fully during application of the normal stress and no drainage is permitted during application of shear stress so here we have two stages of the test as we saw in the first slide you have a consolidation stage then you have a shearing stage in the consolidation stage what you have to do you have to consolidate the sample so for that what will you do you will apply a normal stress you will keep the valves open for the water to drain out so you will allow drainage during consolidation so you will allow water to drain out from the sample so you will consolidate the sample first then what will you do you will close the valves so that no further drainage is allowed during the shearing stage so first stage is consolidation stage that happens as usual then during the second stage you will try to fail your sample by applying your shear stresses but in that case but in that stage you will not allow any drainage so the first stage is consolidation second stage is shearing but in the second stage you will not allow any drainage in the previous one unconsolidated untrained you didn't even allow consolidation or drainage during any stage of the test in this one you will allow consolidation in the first stage and in the second stage when you are shearing your sample or failing your sample you will not allow any drainage all right so volume change happens during the consolidation stage but then after that while shearing your sample you will close the valves so that during the testing or during the shearing and failure of the sample there is no further Uh, volume change taking place uh, and excess pore pressure is developing with whatever remaining water is there in the pores right so this test uh, is also this test also takes a short time after the test uh, sample consolidates okay consolidation of course it takes some time so once you have consolidated the sample the test moves on very fast because you can shear it and the soil sample fails very fast okay so this test is called a consolidated cube test okay you will consolidate the sample but after that it's very fast you can shear the sample you will fail the sample you will get your sigmand tau you will plot your failure plane sorry failure envelope so this is designated as cu c for consolidated u for undrained or qc test consolidated cube test okay the drained test so in this test you will allow drainage throughout the test so throughout the test means there are two stages in the test consolidation stage and the shearing stage throughout the test during both these stages you will allow drainage all right so drainage is permitted fully during consolidation and shearing stage so of course if it is a cohesive soil for drainage to happen completely uh, to consolidate the sample it will take a lot of time and during shearing also pore pressure is developed and that pore pressure as the drainage is allowed that pore pressure slowly dissipates 
your mu slowly decreases and your sigma dash slowly increases and the uh, once your uh, sigma is equal to sigma dash and mu is equal to zero then the soil starts failing so for that sigma dash you will get your tau so this test actually takes a lot of time so soil is initially consolidated under an applied normal stress and then it is tested for shear by applying the shear stress very slowly so that uh, drainage is happening continuously and once the water is removed the soil finally fails so in this test no pore, pr pore pressure is uh, no excess pore pressure develops because as uh, you keep on allowing this drainage the pore pressure slowly keeps on dissipating and also as the pore pressure keeps on dissipating uh, the water from the voids are removed and the particles will rearrange as there is some normal stress and volume change keeps on happening in the sample so it requires four to six weeks to complete one test in positive soils because pore pressure dissipation takes a lot of time and consolidation takes a lot of time so it takes four to six weeks to complete one test in cohesive soils. This is called a slow test or a consolidated slow test. So we have unconsolidated undrained test or UU test, which is very fast. Then we have consolidated uh, cube test where consolidation takes time, but the testing is uh, pretty fast because you don't allow any drainage during the testing phase. Then we have the drained test where uh, it is also called the consolidated slow test because drainage is allowed during the whole uh, testing process. You will allow consolidation of the sample and you will allow pore pressure dissipation in the sample while uh, shearing also. So it will take a lot of time. So this is designated as CDS or SC test. CD uh, stands for consolidated drained test. It's also called consolidated drained test. Okay, Sample is consolidated as well as it is drained throughout the testing process so how will you choose whether you have to do uu uh, cd or cu test so that depends upon the type of soil and the problem in hand as i told you earlier you have to try to replicate as closely as possible the field condition isn't it so in the field if there is no possibility for drainage which one will you go for unconsolidated undrained test isn't it similarly depending upon the site condition and the type of soil and the uh, you know what problem you are looking at whether you are looking at short term stability or whether you are looking at long term stability whether you are looking at the construction of a foundation or whether you are uh, you know improving or stabilizing your soil or whether you are looking at an excavation so depending upon the problem in hand and depending upon the type of soil and depending upon the site conditions you will decide whether you have to do a uu cu or cd test Okay. So problems of uh, short term stability of foundations, then excavations and earth dams, you go for UU test, unconsolidated untrained test. Then problems require requiring long term stability, you will go for CU or CD test because in long term stability, of course, uh, when you apply, keep on applying a load, suppose you construct a house, you know, the soil underneath, if drainage is allowed, what will happen? Slowly the soil will consolidate. So in that case, uh, the load will be slowly completely transferred onto the soil and the soil should be able to take that whole load, isn't it? Because water will slowly dissipate. So your sigma will be equal to sigma dash at some point of time and at that time the soil shouldn't fail. Right. So for long term stability problems, you will go for a CU or CD test again, depending upon the field drainage conditions. So There are several tests for determining the shear strength of soil. So as I told you earlier, uh, it's found by plotting your failure envelope, right? So once you plot your failure envelope, how do you plot your failure envelope? You plot uh, different points uh, in a sigma tau space. So how do you get those points? First, you will uh, apply a normal stress sigma on that soil and you will find out at what point the soil fails, at what shear stresses the soil fails. So you have a combination of sigma and tau. Then you increase your sigma, so you will get another value of tau. So you will keep on doing this and you will get a straight line when you join all these points. Right. So once you get those points, you will join them. You will find out your failure envelope. Then the slope of failure envelope is your phi and the uh, uh, y intercept of your uh, failure envelope is your C. Right. So there are a few laboratory tests for this. One is a direct shear test, triaxial compression test, unconfined compression test, laboratory vein shear test, torsion test, and then you have ring shear test. Then you have few field tests like vein shear test and penetration test. These are all the different tests uh, allowable now for uh, determining the shear strength of soils. So in this we will see in detail direct shear test, 
triaxial compression test and unconfined compression test and main shear test we will see in the class okay first one is direct shear test so you will have a, a soil sample like this this is what your equipment is going to look like okay this is a direct shear uh, equipment this is a shear box this okay. is a shear box okay this is your loading setup i mean rolling setup then this is your loading setup what okay this is your loading setup so you apply normal stress here okay as you can see my mouse will be moving you will apply your normal stress here and this is your shear box okay this is called a shear box okay so inside this you have a serrated uh, plate like this serrated plate like this and inside this you will fill sandy soil or your soil sample you will fill your soil sample inside the space that i am showing you here okay six this is soil specimen inside this you will place a soil specimen then you will cover it with this uh, you know uh, serrated uh, metal grids then above that you will uh, uh, you know close this using the loading pad and this is a steel ball so that the normal stress that you apply is distributed evenly then you keep applying your normal stress here okay you have a normal stress acting on the soil sample like this normal stress okay what is the next step is you will try to apply a shear force right you will try to apply a shear force as you can see here number 13 will apply a shear force here so these are fixed the top part of the box is fixed this is removable okay this half is removable this half is also this box is completely removable and this is your uh, you know rolling setup so you will take this box out you will fill soil inside you will keep this here then you will apply a shearing force here okay you will try to roll this towards this direction this is fixed all right shear resistance 14 this is fixed all right so you will keep this steady you will keep this constant and you will push this base so what will happen the soil here soil inside what will happen for that particular normal load the soil here has to roll over each other and this top part move this bottom part moves in this direction right so for different normal stresses what is the shear stress at which the soil fails this is what you are going to measure in this test so uh, you will place a soil sample inside this uh, like this this is how your soil sample is going to look it's uh, having a dimension of 6 by 6 cm and it's about uh, 2 to 2.5 cm thick so this is your sample that you keep inside this uh, shear box all right you will apply the shear stresses you will keep this constant and this moves right this bottom part is pushed in the side so the particles along this interface they roll over each other for that particular sigma these particles are going to roll over each other and fail so for this sigma what is the tau so you will get a combination of uh, so this is one test so in the next step of the test what you will do you will do you will you will remove the box again you will fill the sample again then you will increase your sigma so for the next value of sigma again you will find out another tau f for another test you will increase further increase your value of sigma for that you will find out your tau f right so you will get a combination of sigmas and taus and you will plot your failure envelope right so this is measured this sigma we know whatever we are going to apply that is measured and this tau is measured using a proving ring so you will find out this tau and you will find you know this sigma so slowly uh, you keep on increasing this shear forces and at what particular point it is going to fail uh, that you will identify from the readings in the proving ring and then you will plot your sigma versus tau as you can see here so you will plot your tau versus sigma as you can see here for different values of tau first test what is the tau you got you will plot that second test what is this for that sigma what is your tau you got third test for that sigma what is the tau you got so you have three points so what you will do you will join them using a straight line so that line is going to intercept on your tau axis at this point so this intercept is your cohesion of the sample and the slope of this line is the phi of the sample so you have your c and phi so you found out the shear strength parameters of the soil from the test so you can also plot the more circle for this if you plot the more circle you can see here that this is the failure plane here 
this is not your failure plane. So for a particular sigma, it failed at a particular tau, which is represented by your failure envelope, of course, and this is going to be your failure plane. So in this problem, this is a major limitation of this test because the failure plane in this test is actually predetermined, which might not always be the weakest point in the actual soil sample because in this test, you are actually failing your sample. You are forcing your sample to fail throughout this plane, isn't it? This is a predetermined failure plane, but in an actual soil sample, this need not be the actual failure plane because the failure plane can be anything and it can be any uh, plane inclined at any angle theta to the major principal axis or major principal plane, isn't it? Right? So in this case, you can see that this is, of, of course, your uh, major principal plane will be horizontal because your normal stress acts uh, on that plane, right? That plane is horizontal here, right? If you look at the sample and the test setup, you can see that the major principal plane on which the major principal stress acts, major normal stress acts, it's actually horizontal. So that is represented here for that normal stress. What is your tau f? So you get that point, you draw that line, you get your failure plane. So this is the pole in this case. So the major limitation of the test is that the failure plane is actually predetermined, which might not always be the case. This is a very uh, serious limitation of this test. But of course, you can get your uh, phi from this and C from this, but this is a limitation uh, which uh, people accuse this test of. All right. So this test can be stress controlled or strain controlled. So in strain control, the shear strain is gradually increased and the shear stress is measured. And in uh, uh, stress control, your shear stress is gradually increased and the shear strain is measured. OK, these are two types of tests. So I want you to go and uh, go to Ample and watch this video and understand how this uh, uh, you know uh, test is done and the failure envelope is plotted. All right else you would uh, you guys would be doing this experiment in the lab right now but unfortunately we are all at our homes now so uh, you can watch this video and try to understand how this test is done all right thank you